Good everyone, welcome to Matty Scale Models, video number two on the Renwall M62 Wrecker Truck for the Big Rig Group Build, um, hosted by Jeff's Model Garage. Um, check out Jeff's channel and it will have like a little link in the end credits of the video. Wow, this thing, um, this, this kit is uh, really, really a... Um, really a, a, a challenge yeah what can i say um i was it looks impressive when you open the box there's bits in it everywhere but my blimey if you want to build this kit guys you're going to have to need some sharp hobby knives blades uh, a tube of filler some good sanding sticks and a lot of bloody patience um the bloody thing is full of sink marks um, there's missing detail, which I think is important. Um, and like every part that I've picked up so far, you, everything you've got to clean up. Uh, if you wanted a project that you've only got, you only build two or three kits a year and you want something that you will get your money's worth out of, buy one of these. You will be spending so much time cleaning it up, you'll get your 20 bucks worth out of it handling the plastic. So, where am I up to? Uh, as you can see, there's numerous parts on the bench. Um, the engine's assembled. Um, there was a dirty grave injecting pin mark sink. Well, it's not, they're not pink, they're like a sink mark. They're like, like that thing there, and bigger. It's, and I'll show you in a minute in that front spring. It's like you could, uh, you could lose yourself in one. Um... So I've got to sand that off, but there's look, there's nice detail on the motor for what it is for the age of the kit. Oh, no, I shouldn't be too critical, but um, the engine is completed. Uh, a lot of cleanup work on the sump, every part, every seam, cleanup. Um, the chassis, but the. Where you can see the grey there is actually um, where I've had to fill it, um, sink marks, and then sand with a sanding block. Um, up the front here is really some bad sink marks, and I'll, but I can get away with that because I've got to put a gusset, uh, some styrene sheet in the front there as a bumper bar bracket for the big bumper bar it should be a big steel plate to bolt to the chassis um, they're missing that you can see the injector they're not injector why am i saying injector um sink they just sunk these holes everywhere and everything if i can't if i can't get that to look with a bit of filler and maybe uh, carefully score in the spring and then I might be able to hide a little bit with some pigments and stuff like that um, if that doesn't work I'm going to actually pull the front springs out of the chassis and I'm going to build my own leaf springs out of styrene strip and I'll use, I've been thinking about it I'll, I'll use um, some brass copper or copper wire out of electrical cables to make the u-bolts and hangers and things like that but i don't really want to go to that point i'm, I'm doing a lot more to this kit than what <clears throat> i really should be but i want to make this a really good effort because uh, it's for jeff's model garage so <laughs> i want to make sure that i get a good job out of it the chassis as you see where there's spring hangers and then there's cross members in the kit there's not a damn rivet. There's no bolts, no rivets. She's smooth skin, babes. Yeah. So what I've been doing, I've been drilling out and adding my own rivets to the chassis um, the best I can. Look, it's not perfect and it's not 100% accurate, but it gives some sort of replicate. You know, it is because I can't really find much info on these, even though these M62s were popular and used for years on the internet to find some decent reference without having to pay for it um, is really, really hard. Uh, I've found a couple of good walk-arounds now that I've been using. 
in the front here, you'll notice that I've knocked something up out of some styrene and stuff. This is a winch carrier. It's like a guide. Uh, it's not finished yet, but this was missing from the kit. All they gave you was this horrible looking drum thing in the front, which I hacked out. And I've been building this. Um, I used 135 scale uh, British ammo crate, which I don't like them, but I used that to cut it down, glue it together for the bottom. I've still got to make the winch drum inside here yet. Uh, but this is so uh, when you're winching on angles, the cable, will, this front will pivot from side to side um, to help let the cable run on the roller up and down nicely. Um, so I'm just making that up now. And a few bits and pieces. I've got to make new, one of these are broken anyway, but they shouldn't stick out flat like this. These drop down in the front, on the front of the bumper bar. And I'm sorry about the out of focus here, I think, guys, but... There was also sink marks in the front of the bumper bar. So it's been a battle. Um, so I'm doing all the rivets. So I'm drilling them out, stretching some sprue. And uh, then they're just cutting these little sprue pieces into little bolts. Drilling the holes into the chassis rail. Putting these in with extra thin cement. Then cutting them off and then sanding, excuse me, sanding them down. And putting a little bit of extra thin around them to give them a sort of a roundish head, um, which will give me some sort of replication of a of a rivet or a bolt or, or something going through. Um, yeah, the front springs are disappointing, and still underneath here, um, this dark green line, which I'll show you on the rear diff, is stretch sprue. I picked this up from Charlie Mack. Uh, for using stretch sprue for filling your seam lines in on aircraft. I'm actually using these again. Um, I've got a really horrible seam line that runs through there. And I checked under my truck. These diff housings are welded together as two pieces. Um, I've used some stretch sprue, sprue one to fill in the horrible gap there, but also add a bead of weld to my diff housings on the rear. There. So they're done. Um, transfer case is done. Some nice detail, a few bolts on it, look, honestly. Um, but inject the pin mark in here, which I can't get out. Um, the rear walking beam springs I've got to clean up. There is ejector pin marks in the back of those, which I can hide with some weathering. But it's just like cleaning up every single spring end. Um, you know, there's heaps, heaps of work. Lucky we've got plenty of time at home. Uh, the fuel tank's together. Got some nice detail for the cap and the filler and the sender unit and the strapping. But yeah, it had injected sink. These, not injected, just sink marks. Um, so I've cleaned all those up. The drive shafts and the top of the diff housings, the, the, the pinions, I think they are. Um, you'll see that these have had sink marks repaired in those too. Like, yeah, you, you'd lose the truck in one of those. And everything, every seam, everything's cleaned up. I've just got to go around now and get some of the furriness out of my cleaning uh, with a bit of extra thin cement. They're not perfect, but I, I, don't, think, I don't think you can get them perfect. Um, the exhaust is done. I'm just got to drill out the end. I might redo these brackets here because they are a little bit um, bit over scale, I think. Um, and then the tyres. The tyres are moulded quite well. They're just a two-piece thing. And they've got a seam line where you join them together. Now, I don't know if it's just me or it could, could be just me. See how the tyres have got a curve in them here. Now, I don't know if that's right or not, guys. So I liked it more. I've got the file back out again. And I've filed them down flat. So they look like they're worn. They're not bulged in the middle, if that makes any sense. I could be wrong. Um, but I've worn them down. It's a lot of work. God, man, they've got all these tyres. And, you know, you're looking at 15, 20 minutes on each tyre to sand them down to get an even finish to them and it's a lot of work if you look if, oh, I, I mean I've always wanted to build this kit and uh, 
I'm uh, sort of testing myself out here. Um, you'll get your money's worth, don't you worry about that, for a time. But yeah, the, the engine fits in the chassis all right. Uh, uses the radiator to... Uses the radiator to... Oops, upside down, Miss Jane. It uses the radiator, the top radiator hose there to hold it into place. Um, the fan looks all right and a few things, so I might even try to put a bit of wiring through this thing. You car modellers out there like to do that sort of stuff. It looks good if done properly. I might try to add a bit of wiring to this engine. I might try to add some fuel lines and bits and pieces of electrical wiring running up and down the chassis. Um, just depends how my health and temper is after I finish doing all these other uh, rivets on this side and and fill a few things in. Um, so I'll get all that done um, and assembled and I'll come back and then we'll do the cab. Uh, I'll do a separate video on the cab. The cab has got a lot of work, feeling and sanding to do. It's not a very good fit. Uh, we'll... I don't know if the, I just looked at it and went, whew. And I'll show you why. Um, but I'll get the jazzy done. Then I'll do the cab. And then I'll do another video on the Reco unit itself, the crane. Um, and then, yeah, well, I'll paint it and, um, and see how it goes. The reason why I haven't done the drag and wagon... Um, I only had one jar of olive drab full and I've got this one here which has got about that much in the bottom of it so I'm thinking that should be enough to do this kit the time I do the black base coat uh, primer then the olive drab and I'm hoping this thing's olive drab um, I have to do some more research on that too um, and then I've got a little bit of that one this jar here I can add some yellow to that for a highlight um i haven't traveled my camera tonight sorry guys so yeah the dragon wagon i'll do next and it should be a breeze compared for what i'm doing here but thanks thanks to jeff for running the thing thanks to all my new subscribers be safe stay at home um go and buy a truck kit or something and build it but don't buy this one um don't buy this one Buy, buy yourself something else. <laughs> yeah, till next time, guys. Catch you later.